Uh, so, as to get started, this is the this is the final cut screen right here. Up the top, we have the menu functions, just like in many other programs. Um, and a lot of these you'll be using quite a bit. Um, there's the edit screen here. Uh, there's trim, there's mark, there's clip. And a lot of this stuff has um, keyboard shortcuts too. Um, that'll... That's the one I need to get a really good list of because that would be really helpful But Oh, sure, sure. Like you want me to go over it? Like... No, 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 no. Okay, gotcha. All right. You get one of those fancy keyboard overlays, so it's already right there in front of me. So just to make sure we're all in the same um, space, we're all viewing the same stuff. If you'll go up to a uh, window here, go to workspaces, and you make sure it's set to default. Or if you want to be fancy, yep. you hit command zero, and that'll set the screen to default. All right, is everyone good? Yep. Perfect. Okay. So, so now I go over the different features and stuff. So this here is called the um, the event browser. This is where um, your libraries, your events, and, and your files eventually are going to be stored. That's where you go to see um, all the different clips you have. Um, and how you organize them so that you can make your project. This here is the playback window that lets you play back the things that you're seeing, either from the event window or from the timeline. And this is the timeline. That's where you assemble clips, you um, add effects to them, you, you, know, you put them all together um, to make your movie. And over here, hold on. That's the inspection window. So that is where you um, you change um, different effects inside the clip. You can change volume from there. You can uh, change the position of the clip. You can change uh, color coding, all that sort of stuff. So um, now to go over the organization of uh, of events and libraries and all that. So uh, Final Cut basically has three tiers for um, how you organize clips and all that. So the best way to do that is if you go up to file and look at new, you'll see these three things here. There's library, there's events, and there's project. So a library is basically a um, compendium, whatever you call it, that contains um, events and within the events contains projects. And typically the way you set it up is that your library is for one, one specific show you're working on or one event or whatever. Uh, so I don't know, you, you shot some footage of uh, the local rock concert and stuff. So you make a new library called Rock Concert. And then each event you set up will be, um, you know, this is the concert on day one, day two, day three, day four. And then projects, those are uh, the videos you're making of those. So the projects could be like, uh, any specific thing at that concert that you want to talk about. This is song one, song two, song three. And that's that's how you organize everything. So we're going to start a new library right here. And we're going to call this one, let's see. We're going to call this one Waterfall. That sounds nice. So if you're on the Metro East laptop, you'll want to make sure it gets saved to documents because uh, it won't let you save it to movies for some reason. Um, Richard, well, that's can... not fair. <laughs> I know, but Richard, you can save it anywhere you want. So, you, so you just type in the new name, and then you click save. Okay. Yeah. 
Hold on a second. Let me just clear all that out. There we go. Okay, and you'll notice when you create a new library, it has two different sections already built in. There's smart collections and there's uh, an event that's named after today's date. It does that automatically when you create a new library. It just names it after today's date. Um, you can rename it by hitting return and then typing in whatever you want it to be called. Smart Collections isn't going to show anything yet, but essentially, uh, as you can see in the drop down there, Smart Collections organizes things based on types. So it'll keep um, I've, all the video clips in one section, it'll keep, keep, keep all the stills in one section, the projects, all that stuff. So if you have a lot of things in one library and you're not sure which event to look in, um, this is a good way to kind of sort things pretty well. Uh, there is also, get this UI out of the way here. There is also a search bar right here. So if we had clips and we wanted to find something, that would bring them up. But let's actually let's assume get... you've named it. Yeah, yeah. So. So that's so that's our events. That's what we're storing things in. So now let's import media. There's a few ways to do that. Uh, you can either click this button here. This button will only be here if there's no other clips in the uh, the window. Um, and in fact, let's let's actually create a project here since we don't want to get too far off topic. Let's go to new. So file new, and you'll notice I can create another event here as well. If I click that, it'll let me type in a name. I'll call it. We're going to do a new library. No, no, we're not doing a new library right now. I'm just showing you how to create oh, okay. another event if you wanted to. Got it. Uh, Zoom puts a thing at the top of my screen here. I'm trying to move it. Come on, you. There we go. Okay, so you could title it. Whatever I want. And that'll add a new event there. And you can put new footage in there. So I'm gonna delete that just because I don't I don't actually want it there, but oh, come on. <laughs> there. But anyway. Bye -bye. So yeah, let's create a new project now. So file new project. And I'll also name this thing waterfall because why not? I don't need to be too creative here. We're just demonstrating. Boom. And yep, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, um, a project is the place where you assemble all of your clips. So when I created it, it automatically showed me down here, a little space where I'm going to put all my clips. And so now let's get our clips. Let's go to file, import, up. Oh, let me not rush ahead here. We get, so as I said, there's a couple ways. Um, you can, as, as I said, there was that button there when there wasn't a project that said import media. But you can also go up to here. Go to file, import, and media. And you'll notice the, uh, if anytime something has a shortcut, it shows it to the right of here. It's called um, command I for um, import. And you'll notice that for a lot of these things, there is a shortcut. So you don't need to know them, but it is handy to know them and it helps you, it helps you work faster, so. I'm going to try my best not to use shortcuts if I can, uh, just because you can't really see my hands, you can't see what I'm doing. So I'll try, I'll try to um, demonstrate without doing that. But I'll also point these out when I can because they they are helpful. Yep. So, 
When you bring up import media, you'll, you'll get a screen that looks sort of like this. Now, uh, you won't see all this stuff down here probably, uh, unless you've already been to that section, you'll probably just see this part and down here will be blank. Uh, so you'll want to go on, on our screen. Um, Richard, you can just find wherever your footage is. But for us, we'll need to go to workshop, then down to movies, double click on that. Yep. And then FCPX training. Basic editing. footage, and then finally, sense of place. So is it, have you been able to, Ellery, have you been able to find all that? Yep. Okay. I've already been there. I'm trying Perfect. to get to my external drive. Oh, um, your, an external drive should show up on the side here. It should be under devices, I think. It'll. Um, I see it. Okay, perfect. And yeah, you just go over to wherever you find footage um, and I'll show you how to import those. Oh, I something it. I forgot to mention before, um, not that any of you have been, but uh, if you can try not to um, jump ahead, um, just because like I go over quite a few things and uh, uh, we'd, we'd hate to, to miss some of the stuff I'm going over. So um, just to keep in mind, so Here's how you get multiple clips going. So, oh yeah, something else to mention. Uh, Final Cut has this neat little thing where when you click on a clip here, it'll preview the clip for you. So I have this clip of a waterfall and you'll see it has the image of the waterfall here, but also if I scrub my mouse over it, I can see it moving. So I can get kind of an idea of what's going on here. In fact, if it had sound in it, some of these have sound. Let's see if I can find one that has sound. Now, if, it, if it has sound in it, um, it'll actually play the sound for you when you scrub over it too. So that's handy if you're trying to find one specific thing. But yeah, as you can see, not a ton of action, like there's falling water and stuff like that. But, <laughs> uh, this might be a good day for that anyway. Oh, it's perfect. It's very on theme. <laughs> and yeah, you can just scrub over looking for certain, certain things. But we're gonna try and get all of this stuff. So the way to do that, there's a couple ways. Uh, if you wanna select multiple clips, you can, hold down command. I know you can't see me doing that, but if you hold down the command and you click different clips, you can select more. Um, you can also click the first one, hold down shift and click the last one that you want. And that'll, that'll select all of them in that line. Or if you know that you're just gonna grab all of them, there is a shortcut called Command A. So if I hit Command then A, that selects all of them. And the handy way to know that you have grabbed all of them is that the button down here in the bottom right will change from Import Selected to Import All. And that's how you know that you have selected all of them. Okay. So now we've selected all, gonna import them. Boom. Whee, oh boy. So, yep, you'll notice that all the clips have now shown up in this spot. Now, there is many ways to view all the clips in here. Uh, if you go up to this little film strip, you'll see there's different options. You can make them slimmer or taller, or you can make the clips okay. physically bigger. So if you if you just want to have a better look at them, better look at the preview, that's a good way to do that. Or you can also use this, which displays them, if you move it further out, 
it displays them by their time differences. So let's see, this clip here, I can see is about 50 seconds long. This one here is about 25 seconds long. Or let's see. And this one here is over a minute. And you can see that because I have changed this, it's basically showing me um, the differences in time between them. So I, I can tell just visually that this clip is longer than these two, even without seeing numbers and knowing exactly how much. And some people find this helpful for, for like, figuring out what they're doing. Yeah. 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 Makes it, sense. It's a helpful visual, it really is. Um, and if you don't want that, you just slide it all the way to the other end here and they all show up as the Basic same. Clips. Got it. And you can also change, if you go up here, this, tur this turns it from into list view where you just see their attributes. So you can- Oh, see I like the, the fact that you can see the audio on that there. Yeah, uh, that was the other part. Um, Very helpful. Yeah, when you're in list view like this, it lets you see the audio. And I think, let me go to regular view here. I thought there was a way. Is that it? No, probably not. I thought there was a way to show that in here as well, but I could be wrong. It's all right. Um, but anyway. Knowing means, it's available is helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me bring them out a bit here too, because I want to demonstrate that audio scrubbing. So, oh, somebody joining us? Who's coming in? Oh. Taylor, are you still there? I'm here. Uh, talking yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. Who's here? Where? What? I heard oh, the me. ding dong of somebody, somebody trying to join. So. It might have been my phone in the background. Who knows? Oh, hey, Robert. I can't hear a word anybody's saying. Right. If you, uh, you can make the audio, you'll be able to hear us. Oh, well, Robert, are so you I'm here? here. Okay. Robert, can you hear us? Richard Kaufman, nope. Richard Robert Rosie Brown. Huh. See how do I write? How do I answer that? Okay. I don't think he can hear us right now. Um, Let's see. I'm uh, messaging him on the chat. Let's see, reaction. How's my audio? You're fine. Oh, yeah, I can hear you just fine. Yeah, I did. I didn't change it, too, so I think got it all. Turn this up, turn okay. that down, turn it around. Yeah. I muted my HP, and then I turned the sound back on my Mac, know. and it worked. Oh, there you go. Just keep experimenting. Sooner or later, you'll find something that works. But I got to keep my head to figure on. It out. Share screen, chat. People used Steve. to think I knew what I was doing, but I just kept pushing buttons until something worked. Okay. Chat. Yeah, where I, I have 
Okay, check. It'll be interesting till he finds us. There's a chat. Right. To the left. Right. Chat. Right. If you click on the chat icon, it would a chat window. Chat. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Jalu, you're, you're on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. When he, when he, when he gets in, try to get him up to speed. Uh, if you can break out room, all that. All right. Do you have co-host abilities? I do not have ability to create a breakout room. Okay. Let me, let me change that. Uh, it's always something. Always something. It's new frontier. Yeah, Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana, my mother, my dad used to always tell me. Anyway. Oh, here we go. Or I'm dating it. myself doing that. Huh? Well, says your host. Um, let's see. Oh, I see it now. Okay. There you go. All righty. So, uh, as I was going over before, so there is um, there's these things called video and audio skimming, um, and we'll go over the the rest of these later. But I'm just going to turn on audio skimming for now. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Okay, so what audio skimming, video and audio skimming allow you to kind of scrub through here. And you can kind of hear the audio. Now, as I said, they're not, there's not exactly dialogue happening here, happening here, but um, that you can still kind of hear what's going on, and that is helpful in other kinds of works. So, let's see where we I are. Lost my ability to skim for some reason. It's just frozen. Did, um, did it, so are you like no longer on it and it's just not showing anything or, or what's happening? Oh yeah, the clip is there and I was, be, I was able to skim back and forth and now all of a sudden I can't skim, so I don't know what happened. Okay. Uh, oh, I see it. I got it. Hang on. Okay, perfect. There it is. I got it back. Great, great. Congratulations. Okie dokie. So, uh, and yeah, just to demonstrate smart collections again, uh, if I go to stills on here, there's no stills. Um, if I had favorited one of them, it would show that. But if I go to like projects, it shows the, the waterfall. If I go to all video, it shows all of that. So now let's see where we're at now. Hey Glenn, I can't add myself to the breakout room. Can you? Do you? You should be able to. Uh, Hold on one sec. Let me try again. Sorry, uh, Robert. I'm trying to add myself to your the room. I don't see when I click on the uh, assign. I don't see my name in there. I think. Oh, I think there's you if you like um, click on it. There should be a thing that just says join breakout room, and that's just just on your end. So for me, I have like the breakout room like option, and then when I click it, I can assign people, but I don't have a join the room. Okay, uh, let me see here. Okay. So I was someplace, but it had some rotary stuff in it. And I thought, that's not right. That's mine. 
Robert, I was trying to uh, join that room with you so I can. Um, oh, oh I, I'd be love to figure out. I need to get back in it though because it had something, had personal information up there. Okay, so now I'm trying to figure out how to get back to it. Can you hear us now? I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Oh, it was a audio problem I had here. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Can and you can hear us? Okay. Yep. Okay, good. Then I think that's that's why I was trying to create the breakout room I so that you. I could help you get your sound going. But since it sounds like it is working, yeah, I got that figured out. However, I couldn't. I I'm not on Apple. I'm on my other computer. So I don't know. Somewhere along the line, it might be an issue. But I do. I need to get on my um, internet here with with Apple to make this work? Uh, yeah, yeah, if, if um, I'm trying to figure out where I, where I go on Apple to get onto Wi-Fi. It's in the upper right corner next to um, the battery. Uh, the see battery. a Wi-Fi symbol. Okay. Glenn is uh, showing you on the screen share right now where the Wi-Fi symbol is located. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the transition from PC to Mac. Oh, it's terrible. It's a different world. <laughs> it's backwards. I, I, when I was doing technical school, people had either Hewlett Packard scientific calculators or Texas Instrument. Same thing. They were backward to each other. Well, I got a flag up here. I got a T up here. And I got two things I don't understand up here in the upper right corner. Only two things? Well, I've got, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I probably don't understand any of it, truth be made, but I don't see anything that looks to me like it'd be Wi-Fi. Maybe this is it. So, so yeah, you see the flag, you see all that. Do you see the, the day and, and time, Saturday? Yeah, I do. Okay, so to the left of that, do you see a little battery symbol with the lightning bolts? Uh, huh. All that. It'll, it'll be to the left of that. Is this is this little symbol right here? Okay, is it to the left of the flag? Uh, it is to the left of the flag, not exact, not right to the left of the flag. Is it to the left of the T? Left of the T? Uh, no, it should be to the right of that. I don't. I see a question mark there. That's what I see. Yep, should be to the right of that question mark. Oh, wow. I don't think it's there. Uh, it should it's, be. It um, just says, says click for IT support. Well, I don't know how to make what shouldn't be be. No, no, that that is the question mark. When you click on that, that's for IT. It should be two symbols to the right of the question mark. It looks like um, uh, like four lines, four curved lines, starting. Looks small. like a radio, kind of a radio wave. Radio wave, yeah. Yeah, I haven't got that. I got something to the left that looks like it's uh, undo or do, but I don't have that. Okay. Um, well, I don't know what to say. Let's see. No, I'm not. Yeah, you know, I plugged into this thing. This must be a battery, I'm guessing. Is that what it is? That's what you sent me with the computer. The little white box is in it. That should well, be the that's, that's the power supply. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Power so I'm. Um, yeah, I just. Hmm. Yeah, it should be exactly to the left of the power supply. That's. That's the symbol we're looking for. Yeah, well, there's nothing between the power supply and T. So, so when you, because I'm screen sharing right now, when you see my screen, do, do you see this symbol up here? See your screen. Oh, wow. Okay. If I can get it big enough, <laughs> I can hardly see that. <laughs> I, I can go get my glasses. I'll be back. <laughs> it's a learning curve. <laughs> Find them someplace. Okay. I'm I'm, using, but, okay. Am I able to get him to search for the network? 
if, okay. if, if the icon's not showing up. Sure. Here. No, there's nothing there. Okay. I bet it looks like those two things together are like maybe a check mark and a question mark real close together. Maybe, yeah. But there's nothing between the question mark and a T. The Wi Fi must not be turned no, on. It's not, it's not between the question mark and the T. It would be to the right of the question mark. Oh, okay. Well, I see a little tiny check at the bottom that's next to the flag here. Yep, yep. To the right of there. To the right of there. I'm going to try that. Let's see. Click here. For It says click here for IT support. Oh. Well, I'm being supported already. So. Do we need more? Is that what I'm <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I need to be on the Wi Fi. On a, on a wi -Fi. I need to be on the Wi Fi. Right? Yeah, so it's to the right of there. Um, do you see a little a symbol that looks like a rectangle with a triangle in front of it? Computer monitor. Uh, no, I don't. Where am I supposed to see this? Up it'll there. Be, it would be to the right, right of the question mark and the check mark thing. I don't, but maybe maybe what I need to do is figure out how to get on Wi-Fi with this. OK. Uh, if you. Uh, do you see that magnifying glass next to the um, flag? I do. Okay, so click on that okay. and then type. Um, type. We're going to see. Type. Where was it? What was the thing, um, Jalen? I think he can search for network. Network. Type network. Yeah. And it should be the top hit. The icon looks like kind of a grayish circle with like, like a webbing I around it. Yeah, I see that. Now I got network utility messages, FaceTime, network, flash player. You startup. want just network. And it should be under system preferences or the top hit. Probably network utility would be the top hit if you mean the top of the page, right? Uh, just network. If there is one that says just network and not network utility. For me, it's the top hit, so I don't know oh, what it is. Here's one that says network. Okay. Yeah, click on that. OK, now something came up in my right-hand corner up here. Is, she, is it a dialog box that shows all the available Wi-Fi networks in your area? Should I click it? Might be. I just have I'm, the upper-hand corner button up here when I hit network. I'm going to click it. See, nothing yeah. happened. Nothing, Nothing happens. happens. Okay, network. There's a middle, well, huh. <laughs> Reading, I'm like, I'm at a point now where it's not like I'm, I feel like when you're doing like a, if you're trying to do a code challenge, you kind of know like the general tools of any language, right? Uh -huh. You're like general root. Yeah, I mean, or, or it isn't that different. I'm going to click on network again. Yeah, now. click on network. OK, now it's coming up better. Now it's, well, it's showing me Wi-Fi's, but it's not showing me the ones that I have or any that I've ever seen before. Well, it says, oh, here it is. There's something else. It's Bluetooth USB, I guess that's what it is, or Thunder. Does that make any sense? It says Wi-Fi is on. Ideally, you want to connect to your Wi-Fi. Are you not finding your uh, like the Wi-Fi that you normally use? I'm not. Yeah, it's and I'm not finding any of the ones that appear when I type it in elsewhere, like in the other computer. Network name, gosh. 
and what's happening. How do I a network on? Wi-Fi is turned on, but it's not connected. Okay, I know that. So do I click turn Wi-Fi off? See what happens. I'm just looking for something to do here, different. Let me see what a locate automatic something to make maybe it maybe it can't figure out what my location is so it can't glenn's gonna put uh meet robert you and i in a breakout room so that we can try to figure out how to get the mac online okay do i need to try to no i can't sign in because i have no wi-fi right so never mind okay yeah, I hate to take everybody else's time up for me just trying to figure out how to make this work. I'm going to join Robert, it. Robert, do you see something on the screen that says join breakout room? There you go. Okay. So she's going to help him get, get back up to speed. Uh, is everyone else there still? I think Ellery might have left. I'm know. here. Okay. Ellery. Well, while we're waiting, I figured out I have to mute my Hewlett Packard. For some reason, I keep my headphones plugged in, but I'm not using them. On my Mac, I turn the volume on. It's gotcha. Perfect. Okay. All right. I just better remember that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're not feeding back anymore. That's great. Um, For some reason, if I unplug that headphones, it feeds back even with it muted. So I just know to keep it plugged in. Mm. So um, are you following along OK? Um, do you have any questions so far, Richard? No, you know what really helped me is I can do this, but I always had a problem with my projects, my files, and you explained that to me. And now it's so clear. That was Good. so worth the time because I would get a project mixed up with a, something else and the, and the favorites. And I was going, this is driving me nuts. It's, it's totally clear now. Thank you for that. Great, great. I'm glad it's helping. I just need to save what I'm, whatever I'm doing back to my external drive. Sure. But I'll wait, I'll wait for that later. Okay. Hey, Ellery, we're back. Uh, we're going to get started again. I don't know if you can actually, I want to get to the headphones back in. Hey, Ellery, we're ready to yep. start again when you Okay, are. cool. I was just playing around over here. I didn't have anything to do, so I was just playing around. Well, I got a bigger monitor up here. Okay. If I've been paying attention, I might have been able to put the computer up on a bigger monitor. I'm here. Are you seeing my final cut screen again? Yep. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so now I'm going to show you how to put them onto the timeline. So simplest way that I know of. Um, uh, if you want to just put the whole thing down on there, you click it once. You got the highlight. You see the yellow highlight right here. And then drag it down. And that's the simplest way um, to go about it. If you, if, and the thing to watch out for, if that's what you're planning on doing, let me turn off audio skimming just so it's not leading through all the time. Um, the, the way I see that kind of messed up a bit is that people will try to grab the whole thing and they'll click and drag like that. And they'll say, whoa, what's happening? Why am I not? getting the whole thing. What that's doing is that what Final Cut thinks you're trying to do is select a certain part of the clip. So let me deselect. I think that's. Yeah, it is a pain in the butt when it does that. Yep. So I believe, let's see, there's the mark. And I just learned something new again. So because I was. <laughs> having that problem before and when you did it. So yeah, this is great. I oh, just yeah, want to yeah. get my audio separated because now it's, I can probably get it bigger, but I, I see you have your audio separated to a separate box. Oh uh, yeah, that's probably just the view. Uh, I think I did that when I was trying to see, see the audio in here. Let's see, what was it? It was view uh, audio lanes. There you go. 
So when you when you go up to view and you go to show audio lanes that separates them into two clips, they still move around together. They're still a pair, but Got it. it can make it easier to, to separate them like that. Perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them back together for now though. Um, so yep, the shortcut to deselect all that if you wanna if you wanna reset that is uh, let's go under let's see what was it? It was mark and clear selected ranges, and it looks like the shortcut is option X, and that gets rid of that. So then you can just go click once and drag the whole thing down again. Got it. But that is helpful. Like say. Say this was an actual clip of like things moving and stuff, and we're like, I only want this section. I don't want to bring the whole thing down and then trim it down there. You can you can pretty easily just go like, uh, well, oh. there we go. And now you're only bringing that part down. So, so you can pre-trim your clips. What? Basically, you pre-trim the clips. Yep. Yep, and that's what a lot of people do, um, like when they're professionally editing and stuff. Is that they kind of they kind of do a rough, like a quick trim up in here, and then they do more fine tuning down here. It saves some time. Uh, so when the clip is down here, it isn't just totally limited. You can still extend it to show the rest of what you've clipped out. It will not extend further than the actual clip goes, though. Right. Um, so something I'm sure you're all aware of by now, but Final Cut has a magnetic timeline. And what that means is that unless you specifically set out to make it happen, uh, it will not leave any blank space between clips on this main line here. So if I were to if I remember, it was option X. There we go. So if I were to grab this and say like, well, let's put it a minute out. Oh, it won't do it. It snaps right back. And that is very good most of the time <laughs> because uh, an, a problem in a lot of editors is you'll be trying to get it down here and you'll be like, oh, I think that's close enough. And it won't oh, be. But it won't be. There'll be like a few frames missing and you have to go searching for them. So this completely eliminates that. I've had that problem. It is a pain in the ass. Um, now, this doesn't work for, this only works, I should point out, on this main timeline here. So if I were to grab another clip and bring it down on top, uh, it won't snap all the way to the bottom. It'll go where I put it. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Let's see, where, else, where am I now? I'm trying to put my uh, sound clip back to where you had it, that it's not separated. What did you do to put it back? Uh, so it should just be in, on view um, and show or hide audio lanes. Are you seeing that? I got it, thanks. Perfect. OK. Oh, and uh, the other cool thing is, is that you're not totally in the dark about this sort of thing. When you bring a clip down, it actually shows you in blue there a little preview of what, what it'll look like when it's in there, which is pretty neat. The other cool thing is that when you're dropping clips down in between, it'll actually move them out of the way. So you'll see there, it's actually shifting the clip out of the way there when you drop it in. Okay. If you're not careful, though, isn't there? A, there's a setting that will actually cut that. Instead of inserting in between, it'll actually cut the clip. Yeah, there is a different. You can change that to where it's more like um, it's more like other editors. And I'm let's see, I'm not sure the way to do that, but that's okay. There is a setting. A different type um, of it. it's insert or some kind of different kind of an editing yeah something like that oh i can see you two are back yeah so it was uh difficult to get robert the uh, robert's mac uh connected to wi-fi because there was like an admin 
password that we need to put in. Uh, oh, I, that's not fun. Yeah. So that's something that we should talk to IT about. Like if people's devices aren't automatically connecting to the internet, they're going to need to add it manually. In order to do it manually, they need those permissions. So. Okay. Which I don't have. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so are, did, um, are you up to speed with uh, where we are in Final Cut? Or I, did, I didn't catch Robert up to like where you guys are now. Uh, we were just trying to figure out how to get to the internet. OK. Well, uh, this has been recorded, though, Robert. So if you want to review this later, um, it'll be posted to YouTube uh, shortly after the classes are over. And you can, you can review all the footage back. Um, but anyway, uh, so I was just about to get to something else to point out. When you're putting a clip down um, on the top part here, you'll notice if you can look real carefully, there's like a little line dropping down. Um, and that's basically showing how this clip is connected. So if I were to delete this clip here, you'll notice it shifts both of them back. So let me co command Z to undo. So they're kind of a pair, they're attached. And that goes for any manner of adjustments you make. They're, they're attached like that. And that, can, and that can go on ad infinitum. Uh, so they end up grouped? Yep. So you nice. get all these little groupings happening here. That can be helpful, I guess. It can be. It can be. Uh, uh, one of the one of the things in Final and uh, Premiere that uh, gets kind of annoying. Uh, Premiere is a different editing system. Is that when you want to move one section over, you pretty much just have to grab the whole thing. You have to highlight the whole thing and shift it over because otherwise, uh, it does not automatically group them. All right. Yeah. So. Uh, Final Cut um, gets rid of that by adding that feature. So, uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Uh, let's see. So uh, you'll notice up here on the timeline, there is a similar button. Uh, I'll go over these buttons now that, that I have the chance. There is a similar button right down here as to there was up in the event viewer, which allows you to adjust how the timeline looks. So you'll notice there's different display options right here. So this one is uh, mostly clip and a little bit audio. You can also display just all clip. You can just display the names, which is where, an interesting way of going you? about it. So lost your pointer. It, it's, it's helpful to some. You can show the audio a little bigger. You can show the audio taken up most, um, probably about half of the screen there, or just audio. And bear in mind, even though the preview down here is just the audio, like the whole clip is still there. It's still being shown. And if you were to export this, it would still come up. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to set this back to the way I had it here. There you go. You can also uh, zoom in and zoom out using this. So this makes it easier to see. So I've just zoomed in far enough to where this whole gray section here is just one frame. That's as, that's as far in as it can go. I can also zoom out to where the whole thing is just packed in the corner there. Uh, a fun little shortcut I found um, is when you're all zoomed in and you're like, oh, geez, it's taken forever for me to get to the end. I just want to see the whole thing. You hit Shift Z. Shift Z. That shows the entire um, tool. Though. Let me let me bring that out. And uh, the shortcuts for zooming in and out are Command Plus and Command Minus. So if I hit Command Plus to zoom in, Command Minus to zoom out, uh, Shift Z shows the whole thing. 
handy shortcut. Uh, and this just makes, uh, just changes the clips from being thin boys to wide boys. And notice it's not actually changing the length of the clip this time. It's literally just changing how big it is in the timeline. So well, that, can that can actually be really helpful. That is, that is, if you're trying to see uh, the preview a little better, if you're trying to see the waveform, especially um, a little better, that's, that's pretty helpful. Um, so what are you dragging on to do that? Oh, so the little film clip right here on the right. Oh, it's covered that. up. Okay, I got I got a window over that. That's why I can't see it. Okay. Ah, there you go. Okay, I'll find it. Perfect. So uh, let's see. So now these different things. So uh, so you already kind of got an idea what these two are. This is video and audio skimming. Um. When it's blue, it's activated. When it's white, it's not. So right now, video skimming is on. Uh, there's not much motion in that one. There you go. So you can see the rainfall going and audio skimming is off. So if I turn audio skimming on, let's see, you hear that as you wave your mouse over it. Now, if audio skimming is off, you can still like play it and hear it, but um, that that li that's literally just for when you're waving your mouth mouse over it. So if you're if uh, you're looking for a bit of dialogue or if you're looking for a specific noise um, and you don't want to just play through the whole thing, that's uh, that's handy to do. Um, and you can also turn off video skimming too. So when you when you wave your mouse over it, nothing happens. But once again, you can still play and pause it and all that, get some motion back in here, there we go. I'm gonna turn video skimming back on. This one um, is the solo button. And essentially, that just, that, that's like an audio solo part. So that's, for in this case, it's not very handy, but if I were to, say, put this on top of here. Say I have two competing audios going on. And I'm like, I really want to hear what's up here, but I have this down here and it's kind of interfering. I want to kind of isolate it. And this is just for previews, by the way. I can do that. And now I'm only hearing the audio from this. I'm not hearing the audio down here. Now bear in mind, this is not the equivalent of removing the audio down here so that when you export it, it become, it, you like the viewer won't be able to hear it. This is just for when you're editing. It. Just so, mute it, okay, got it. So, um, so the way you would use that is say you have an ambient track and a dialogue track um, and you wanna just hear the dialogue for now, you're like trying to focus on some aspect of that. You would solo the clip of the dialogue in it and like hear that out and stuff and you won't be distracted by whatever whatever ambience you have going on it so and then this fourth one right here is um snapping and what snapping does is when you're moving a clip around let's see here it will snap so if you if you see here, when you move a clip and you bring it to a joint between clips or you bring it to the end of a clip, uh. you'll kind of see it gets kind of pulled into there when you get too close. And that's called uh, snapping. And which one is that? That's the, what is it? It's the, the symbol right here. It looks like two, it looks oh, like gotcha. two magnets kind of snapping together. All right. Um, and Can you make that bigger for us, or is that impossible? Oh, let me see. Because you got all this height, and yeah, that helps a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure I can um, make the screen bigger, but okay. All right. All right. I can make my mouse bigger if that helps. Uh, 
let me do that really quick. Or it was cursor, wasn't it? Cursor. I think it's accessibility. Accessibility. Yeah. Ah, I always forget. Max. <laughs> that transition. Uh, no, wait. But I thought it was in here, mouse options. No. I'll warn you, you got to be careful if you make your mouse too big, it can be hard to highlight stuff. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I always make my mouse bigger, and sometimes it's hard for me to, to put my pointer on things because it's too big. Yeah. Oh, it's under display. That makes sense. There we go. Okay. Why would it want to make sense? Come on. We should be able to choose color too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would make be all great. fancy. But, yes. But anyway, yep. So it's uh, the snap button is right here. Um, and so if, if you're trying to be like, well, I want this clip to be like at the, at a, at the start of the clip, which most of the time you do most of the yeah. time, yeah. uh, that, that's really helpful. So you don't have to be like pausing on frames and stuff. The other thing to point out is that even when snap is off, I believe, oh no, no, I'll keep that back on. I forget that part, but. Uh, the, the other helpful part is that when snap is on, you see this little timeline here, or the, uh, the needle here. If you move the clip over to that, it'll snap to the needle. So if you're scrolling through and you're like, I want it right here. Yeah. You can pause it there and it'll snap to it. And that's how you can get your edits a little more precise. A little more precision. More precision. And that works for other things too, if you're uh, trimming and you can trim by uh, going to the edge of the clip, uh, you'll see the cursor change. Just click and drag it over. The trim will be kind of stopped by that too. And if you turn it off, and it, like uh, none of those things will happen. So it'll kind of move freely like that. And you'll notice it's not trying to stop me. And same thing with any yeah, don't try to stop him. Come on now. It won't try to stop me. Don't try um, to stop him. And the reason you might want to turn it off sometimes is if you're, if, if there's a quite a quite a lot going on, you have like several clips on top of each other, you're trying to get it like really precise. Um, right. Sometimes there can be so many things to snap to that it might get, that it might just be more trouble than it's worth. Um, but most of the time, it's good to have this on. So, so getting more into trimming a bit. Um, the other cool part about the magnetic timeline is that when you trim the end of a clip that's like in the middle right here, once again, it doesn't create blank space. So when I trim it back like that, it's almost, it's almost as if it's swallowing it, you see. And that's, and that's just trimming the, the edge of the clip and bringing it closer in together like that. I'll be right back. My dog needs to go outside. OK, OK. <laughs> Likely story. <laughs> Would make it. It's a good line. <laughs> yeah, I have to remember that. I don't have a dog, but I have to remember that. <laughs> Could come in handy sometime. Yeah. Most of what I've been doing is writing. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's time to get back to the mechanics because. I remember, the principle, I remember the principles from years back. I'm writing a feature length film on Tahare. On what? Tahare. It's a title. It means pure one. Okay. She came in, she came in the 1840s in Persia. And she cool. was like the Joan, Joan Arc of Persia. Interesting. It has been an interesting thing. A history that I have no idea about. 
yeah. Well, if you like poetry, she's a good place to go to. How do you spell her name? T-A-H-I-R-I-H. -I -I Although it's spelled differently in different places. And it's a title, it means pure one. So how do you know about that? Well, I know it because I study Advent and I write about Advents. And she was a member of an Advent. She followed somebody after Muhammad, which isn't a safe thing to do in Persia in 1840, especially if you're a woman. So she was martyred. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Brave lady. Yeah. It's good you asked me those questions because I'm trying to come up with a one pager to talk about the feature length film. Mm good to know what people are going to ask. How old was she? Well, when she died, I think she was 37. Well, that'd be about right. I mean, life expectancy was quite a bit shorter back then. Well, no, she was a martyr. Actually, there were people that lived older, but uh, there's a, there a huge difference between wealth and poverty then. Right. <laughs> Who uh, killed her? Um, she was killed by a uh, um, she was killed during the, um, I don't know, I'm remember the word of it. It's when all kinds of people are killed for something. So uh, there were about 20,000 Bobbies, which she was killed then. Wow. And about the day she was killed, there was at least 22 others that were killed in her village. like a purge? Yeah. It, yeah, it's worse than that. What's Masada? What, what's that about, Masada? Now that's, the Jews have a word for it. What do you, What is it called when they killed all the Jews? There's a word for it. Shoah? Pardon? Shoah or? N no, oh, that might be in Jewish. I'm back. Yeah, okay. Well, let's talk about what we're supposed to do now. <laughs> okay. Well, to there's nothing wrong with getting off track a little bit once in a while. It's um, good for us. Like, uh, what is it like? Uh, just like niche historical facts. <laughs> now I'm gonna look her up because I've never knew about this person. And I'm curious. Yeah. Well, I'm inviting women to read my script. So if you're that curious, you can. Yeah, I can. I'll message you my email. You can email it to me. All right. Okay, so um, I missed the part where I could expand the clip. What do you do that? It's kind of small. I want to get it as big as you have. Oh, so you go over to this little film clip in the corner here. Got it. And oh, there it is. Okay, got it. There you go. I'm good. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, back to trimming and pointing out that the trimming also works like this. Um, even even at the very beginning of the clip, it'll shift it over, or the timeline that is. And you can also, when you when you trim like this, you're not deleting the part that is there. You can still expand outward to the fullest that that clip will go. It'll stop you uh, when there's there's no more clip there. Um, well, that's no fair. I want to <laughs> add. It won't won't create it out of magic, I'm afraid. Oh uh, man. If you were, if you're just trimming, if you don't want to bother with the, uh, with the cursor changing and all that, you can just use the trim tool, which uh, you can find um, up here, uh, the little arrow. Um, right now it's on select, but you can sw switch it to trim, and trimming is just all that this thing does. That's all it does. I shift it back and forth. Uh, and something kind of cool about it. Let me uh, grab uh, another, another big clip here. So say I have this trimmed like that, to where they're both kind of trimmed. You can, if you grab the middle, you can actually move it over, and kind of shift the defining point between them, which I find kind of cool. Yeah. There's many. There's there's actually quite a few situations where that would be helpful. Oh, so I have a question, Glenn. I've got a clip that I actually ended up selecting only part of 
up mm -hmm. in the bin. Yep. How do I get that back to the whole clip? Sure. So uh, if you go up to, I believe it was um, Mark, uh -huh. you go to Clear Selected Ranges. In the Got it. Options. Got it. Good. That's it. And then Thank you just you. click once and that selects the whole thing. That gives me back my whole clip because I wanted to use more of it, but it wouldn't let me. Hmm. That is that is a helpful one. Um, I, I end up using that a lot. So. So, okay. yeah. so just get back to this, um, since I just showed it off, these are the different tools you have um, for, for moving things around. So selects, we're pretty familiar with, uh, allows you to select different clips, allows you to click and drag like that to select multiple clips and move them around. Um, there's trim, just showed that for trimming different clips between each other like that. There is position. Hmm. Yeah, what's uh, that? Position, if I recall correctly, let me see. Position lets you nullify the magnetic timeline. So you gotta be careful with that. You'll notice it didn't snap back when I pulled it out. It created a blank space between the clips. Uh... So sometimes you actually do want a blank spot. This is how you do that. Okay. You move any clip out as far as you want. And yeah, it totally nullifies that section. And this is probably what Ellery was talking about earlier. You gotta be careful when you put a clip over another clip, it does kind of eat it like that. Right. And bear in mind, anything we do here I'm, I'm just hitting delete to get rid of those. Um, anything we do here is non-destructive. So even though it ate the first part of that clip, I can bring it back just by doing that. Um, all the clips in here, you can you can like do whatever you want with them. You can turn them black and blue. You can uh, flip them upside down. You can do whatever you want to the clips in here the original files will be perfectly fine. So never worry about something like that. Like, oh my God, I messed up this clip so bad. What am I gonna do? Non-destructive. It's non-destructive, everything's fine. Um, then. Yeah, but what if I want to panic, then what? Well, if you want to panic, there's there's plenty of things to panic about whenever <laughs> you want. So, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's not my business which one you choose to panic about. Uh, okay, but... okay. I appreciate that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so range selector is this. It lets you just select any part of the clip and kind of manipulate that in and of itself, I believe. It lets you move it. No, it doesn't. Um, that will, let me see, I have notes here. That's weird, um, doesn't seem to do very much. It, let, it, it, it lets you um, kind of add like notes and stuff to it. You can, you can add specific marks. Um, you can, let's see. Yeah. Hmm. I'm messing up the, the demonstration of it, but um, it, it's it's mostly used for like metadata purposes and stuff. You're selecting certain regions and like, I want this to be uh, something or other. Um, it's not it's not like it's not needed that much. Um, it looks time. like it's a little more complicated than we'll ever need. It's a little more than I think you'd need, yeah. Blade, and I'm not sure why they put blade all the way down here because it's it's probably the second most used one uh, before select. Blade is how you cut clips. So I just separated those clips into two and boom, boom. Yeah, but, whoa, whoa. but how do you, oh, I see it's a top edge, right? Yep, top right edge. Here. Okay, right. And all of these, just like before, there's shortcuts for them. And this is just the letters. So if I, right. I'm on blade right now, if I hit A and go back to select, I can hit B, I'm back at blade. And yeah, you'll notice that when I cut them, <laughs> them into their own separate clips, I can move them around any which way yeah. I want. 
I can I can trim them. All of that. They're now separated. Um, and blade is the one you're going to be switching back and forth to a lot. It's it's uh, well, that's how you edit. That is um, that mm. is one of the cornerstones of editing. So uh, that and trim. That and trim. Yeah, that it really is. Zoom. Well, we don't need zoom too much normally. That's just another way of zooming in on the timeline. Um, oh, I see. OK. I thought but, maybe it actually zoomed the photo for you. <laughs> OK. Sure. All right. So you know you can zoom in on a different section with it. But like, it's normally right. just easier if you just use like Command minus like I'm doing now, Command plus. It, I find that a lot simpler than switching to a specific tool for that, but if, if it's helpful for you, that's fine. And hand? Yes. Hand is just for scrolling. So you can click and drag, lets you scroll all over the timeline. Now, once again, you do, this isn't really necessary. If I uh, like command a minus out a bit, um, you can scroll by grabbing the line down here. Let me go back to select. You can use two fingers on, on your trackpad to scroll back and forth like that. Um, and darn it, Mac, it's not showing the, the line. But theoretically, there you go. You can grab the line down here and move back and forth that way. So yeah, that one's tricky to get to. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a Mac thing. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe when I go to the bottom it. of the screen, I end up with the finder popping up way on, on most of the time. I can see the line down there. Yeah, yeah. They by the time I get to it, the finder pops up at the bottom. They got to make it difficult. That's how it is. But uh, if you have a trackpad, you can just use two fingers like like what I'm doing. I know you can't probably see it too well, but I'm just kind of going like this. See my face. Whoop, Got whoop, it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I, I find that a lot easier than using the hand. But if it's helpful to you, you know, this is all about finding your own path to making this this stuff work for you. So that's the way that works. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, any questions so far? The we, we can actually probably, now that I've went over all that, have like five minutes just playing around with the tools and all that. So if anyone want, if, if you guys just want to do that um, and just ask me any questions you have, um, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. So I'm trying to, I, I'm, I work with Rotary some as a volunteer mm -hmm. and I'm, Trying to trying to take something off of YouTube, but then I want to edit it down, and I I don't know if that's even possible to get it. I can't get it any place. I mean, I try to drag it, and it won't drag. I try to you know. Oh, downloading from YouTube can be really tricky. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. YouTube so is it. Yeah, YouTube doesn't want people downloading the videos off of there. If if it's something you've uploaded to it, they have like a, a thing, no. a method to do, but um if it's somebody okay. else's video there's there's third-party apps that can do it but it, yeah most it, of it, them don't work unless you pay for them i i've had some free downloaders that worked for a while and no longer work yeah because yeah. youtube will change something about itself and yep. they suddenly stop working so that appears to be what they've done to me yes so okay well that's a good good answer to have i think so I probably just need to go back to the source and ask for the original. So. That would be the best, yeah. Yeah. I believe okay. you've hit upon the right answer, yes. Okay. Otherwise, people would be downloading somebody else's stuff all the time. And yeah, yeah, I, I was thinking of that too. I've always been afraid of Zoom. I'm, I'm, not, I'm kind of afraid of the free stuff because if you read what they say, they pretty much got whatever you gave them. Is theirs. <laughs> so, anyway, it kind of works like that. Yeah. yeah. So, 
So generally, this whole section that you've been showing us, if you went through and played with each button, you, I, that's probably the only way I'd get it, but I'd get an idea of how it worked. Yep. Because I, I mean, it's nice to hear about it, but if it doesn't meet a pro, I just have trouble remembering unless I do it. Oh, sure, sure. And, and yeah, this will, this is recorded. So yeah. I went through the whole setup for importing and all that too. So uh, that's good. So we can use it as a training thing for ourselves in the future. Absolutely. You can watch it 10, 100 times, however long it takes. Uh, and stop it. A tutorial. <laughs> it becomes a brand new tutorial. Right. Exactly. Um, well, they would be better edited, though. And I don't know. You know, that's you're talking about time, but when I write, I know that it's not about time. It's got to oh, be sure. about quality. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, editing can take a very, very long time to do. It's a lot yeah. of minute changes yeah. that you got to make. Um, yeah. And sometimes you'll spend a long time making some minute changes. You'll be like, I have this idea. I want to try it out. You do it. It takes a long time and it doesn't work and you got to start again. Yeah. Uh, it's just how it is. It's a long, laborious task, but um, yeah. it's worth it. It is worth it at the end. Well, yeah, and there's the minute things that you do can really change what happens there. Oh yeah, it can. Yeah. Yeah. Really adds to it in ways you don't, you know, that that don't seem like much from the outset, but um, when you put it all together, it like yeah. Oh yeah. Really impactful. Well, from the outset. For me as a script light writer, I've got to get it as close as I can to what it really should be within whatever's being paid for it, you know? Oh yeah. And so if I can stop some errors there, then the next step I think is editing and hiring the right talent and production. So. Okay, Glenn, let's do some audio stuff. How's okay. that sound? Okay. All right. Yeah. Wanna, uh, let's move on to audio. That's so cool. Oh, and I have a thing I'm supposed to be following. I sometimes got off script on it, but. Oh, come on. That never <laughs> happens. I don't know what you're talking about. It never oh, happens. Yeah. Crazy. Who, who could have. That's your that. script. That's your script. <laughs> and it all depends on how good a script writer you had. Yeah. Well, the audience may be different too, you know. Very true. What was I'm sorry. What's the quick command to zoom and unzoom? Uh, it's command minus and command plus. So, oh, that's zoom and unzoom? What do you mean? Zoom in, zoom out. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I'm glad it got uh, so I'm supposed to quickly go into uh, effects and transitions and then go on oh, to some other okay. stuff. So that's fine. Let's do that first. Um, I don't want to get you too far off track. That wouldn't be good. Sure, sure. This learning is off script learning, by the way. I know, I know. <laughs> that's how you're actually learning. Yeah, it's just, I just don't want to like miss something that I was supposed to talk about. Um, right. That's good. Yeah, we, we'll probably appreciate that actually yeah. at a certain point. Yeah. Okay, so uh, before when I was going over the, the skimming and the, the spotlighting and, and all that, uh, there are those two symbols right here to the right of those. They're kind of separated by a line because they're different. Um, and this is transitions, which oh, is okay. a little infinity oh, yeah. symbol is kind of what it looks like to me. 
and yeah. effects. So, Transitions and effects. Oh, okay. And yeah. they are different. They are very yeah. different. So transitions are um, a transition is basically a way of a, of a clip turning into another clip. So yeah. uh, if we're talking filmmaking technique, uh, cuts, which is what we have right here, is the most basic transition there is. A uh, clip just goes straight into another clip uh, with nothing in between. Um, and that is technically a transition, but you won't find it in this side panel here. The yeah. second most common is called a dissolve. Right, right. here, we're calling it a cross dissolve. Right. So if I grab that and I put that in between the two clips here, the cross dissolve kind of slowly fades between the two. Now they look a lot alike. <laughs> well, you can see here at, at the very least, this, um, yeah, it's, it's a waterfall and all, but at least this yeah. is close up and it kind of fades into a wide. Right. Now, how do you change the duration of a dissolve? Uh, so you can change that kind of um, manually here. If you grab the edge of it, kind of like when you're trimming, it'll let you expand it for as long as you want. And this might be okay. a little too long, but it is relaxing footage. So I'll let that stand. And I believe... I believe you can is it always, will that always center that dissolve or can you adjust that you know you might want to take more out of one side than the other yeah yeah um oh let's see i know how to do that in premiere um yeah. will i do that in final cut jessica do you know how to do that she's still here She leave us. She left. Oh well. Okay. Well, she must have. I don't hear her. That's fine. She said that she had to. She had to go early. Yeah. Um. So. What was it? All right. Let's see. No, no, no. I'm wondering if you're doing it now. I don't think so. No. Oh, right click, and it'll let you change the. It gives you change duration. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah. So when you right click on it, um, change duration. You can set whatever length you want it to be. On the right, is that what that means? So right click and it gives you change duration. Ah, oh, okay, I found another one. So if you right click it, and let's see if I can back out of this now. Uh, control, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can also go to modify and change duration and then type right on the bottom of the clip. Ah, oh, yep. Really? Let's see. Wait, 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 wait now. Modify? Go up to modify. Oh, ah, okay. Clip. Right on the clip. Okay. Modify. And change duration. And you can actually change the numbers right on the bottom where it says, uh, where you oh, got the timeline. Like you can that. type anything you want in there. Oh. Yeah, it's in the, uh, goes in the. So, so where's, oh, modifies at the very top. I see it, okay. Got yep. It. What fun. So the thing I found, let's see, just trying to figure out how to get out of it now, but it is, uh, this is pretty helpful. Um, when you right click on the transition, there was an option at the bottom. I think it said modify something or other. Um, and that lets you uh, open precise editor or something like that. That'll let you get a little more precise with open how you want. Open precision editor, right? And I, my my mouse quit on me. I have a trackpad on my Mac. How do I do the right click on a trackpad? I, I, uh, you hold down Control and click. Oh, thank you.
Oh, let me just see here. Hmm. Oh, that makes sense. So, it? yeah, so it's called Show Precision Editor is what it's called. Right. When you right click it. And that let and that gives you a lot more flexibility. Right. I like it. You can yeah. see what's going on. Oh yeah. You. And so to get out of that, um, when you want to, you just hit the escape key and that puts it back. Yeah. So that's good. I'm glad I learned that. <laughs> Does Command Z undo what you just did? Yep, Command Z will undo any edit you just made. So, whoops, didn't mean to delete that. Command Z. Function Z. Yep. OK. So <clears throat> that's basically how a transition works. But there are, as you'll notice, there isn't just cross dissolve here. They put right. they do put it up at the at the top because that's the most used transition Transition's. outside of uh, overused sometimes. Yeah, some would say, but they have tons. They have many many ways of of uh, transitioning. Uh, so like if I were to grab this one here, three D rectangle, and they order them by uh, by name here. So if I was, so I was like, ooh, look at that. We actually play it. Woo! Fancy stuff. Mm. <laughs> um, you can you. There are some pretty obnoxious ones in here. Let me see if I can find uh, objects. Oh, here we go. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's kind of final. That might be good. Do that though. again. I wasn't watching. <laughs> Let's make oh, a little. That, oh, the curtain one. Okay, yeah. Uh, audience leaves the building. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They've stopped <laughs> watching your show because you've used those so many times. <laughs> well, the, just the main thing. There's there's plenty of options in there, and you know, don't be afraid to like experiment. But yeah. Uh, the the main thing to think about is just um, does the transition kind of fit with the moment? You know. It's, yeah. Uh, because that's why that's people tend to default to either cuts or dissolves is because right. they're pretty non-obtrusive. Like if this was like a kid's show or a, uh, <laughs> yeah. a like a Muppets movie or something, that wouldn't be out of out of the ordinary to have a transition like this. But obviously, if you're showing like, uh, you know, if this is a video you made for your grandma's funeral or something like that, you <laughs> might want to... You might want to keep the sillier transitions out of it, just as yeah. example. Yeah, you could end the ceremony with closing the curtain on your grandmother's life, but you know, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Right. right. Well, there you go. Maybe, maybe. Um, so, uh, and yeah, with there's a little search bar at the bottom here for the transition. So if you want to find something specific, uh, I don't know cube i'll look at that i found the cube and you can just type that in to find it you there there are also other i was gonna say there's other dissolves but i guess there's not there is in premiere uh yeah that that's the thing i probably should mention at the start i grew up with premiere i use premiere a lot i i know final cut very well but sometimes i'll confuse the two together so forgive me for that well there are, there's some co ones called blur that are sort of like dissolves. Yeah, blur. Yeah, here's a here's a Gaussian blur. Yeah. And like when looks like a when mistake you click to on me. The transition, <laughs> when you click on the transition, they'll give you all sorts of options up here in the uh, inspector window. So for the blur yeah. here, it has like blur amounts. It has uh, it has horizontal versus vertical. So I can make it like 
zero horizontal, 100% vertical. And you'll notice it'll like fade out like that instead. And also gives you options for how you want it to fade out. Come on, you. Which by default is S curve. Um, oh, yeah, that was something else to mention. Um, so by default, when you put in a transition on, it will affect both audio and video at the same time. Oh, uh, wow. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, so that's something to, to bear in mind. You can change yeah. that when you put one on there. I believe there was a way. Let's see. Let me go back to dissolve. No, I think I was wrong on that one. Uh, there, the only way to really stop that, um, if you don't want the audio to transition, is you need to make sure it's separated from the video. So let me see. If I were to show audio lands, I don't think this will do it. So let me just see, because I haven't tried it before. OK. So if you, yeah, um, I see. so it does do that. So when you change the view, if you go up to view and you go to, um, show or hide audio lanes. You want to show audio lanes so that the the video and the audio were visibly separated. Then okay. if you put a transition between the two, it'll only affect the, the video this time. And you'll hear right. the audio is not super different between the two, but you'll hear uh, uh, a hard cut instead of a transition. That's pretty and in logical. the same vein, you can also put a transition on audio. Uh, well, that's what I thought, but I guess I was wrong on that too. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you were up, where is that modify or anyway? Uh, no. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that was under view. Okay. Um, and okay. right here. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, um, there's something else to mention. You can also put, you can see there, you can put a transition at the very end of a clip. Let me just okay. um, change the view back to, to normal. You can also put a transition at the very end of a clip and that'll fade it out. So it doesn't just have to be between two clips to make it happen. Yeah. So it kind of fades into, into nothing there. And if I were to grab one of the, one of the sillier ones, let's see. Whoop. Yeah, it, it, those work too for putting it at the end. Um, and then as for effects, similar kind of concept. I'm not going to get too much into them. Uh, I suggest you just experiment with these yourself. Um, but there are all different types of, diff of effects you can add. And they separate them between audio and video effects. So if um, if I'm just looking at video effects, there's uh, like there's this one that kind of makes it look like uh, aged paper is what it's called. So ooh, you're making some sort of sepia tone, uh, silent film era uh, kind, kind of deal. Uh, you can or just straight up black and white. That works too. It's, a, it's an art house movie. Isn't that cool? Come on. Could you do that black and white again? Sure. So if you just double click on it. So uh, the way to apply an effect is you have a clip or an area highlighted. And then you just double click on the effect and it applies it to both. Yeah. Like that. So um, I'll also cover just a little bit how to remove effects. Yeah, thank you. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> so um, easiest way to do that is just when you go into there, you'll notice I accidentally added it multiple times. That's something else. 
uh, especially if you're doing keying or something, sometimes that can happen by accident. Um, you just click on it, you make sure it's highlight, and then you just hit the delete button and that gets rid of it. So, so just click it, make sure it's highlighted in yellow, delete button. And that gets rid of all of them. Now, say you were, you add, added some sort of effect. Uh, let's see. Oh, what's a good one? I'll add this film noir. Um, you added it and you're like, okay, I like that, but I want to work on something else without being distracted by the filter here. Uh, you can temporarily, like, you can disable it by clicking this checkbox here. It's still there. You can still reactivate it at any time. You won't have to go back into the effects bay but it's not going to be showing. Um, and something to keep in mind is that if you have it deselected and you export it, it's not going to show up um, in the export. So when you, when you export something, it's only going to show what's been, what is visible on here. So that's something to keep in mind. That's not, so it's not just a preview. It's how the video is going to look. So. Okay. Now you lost me with that statement. So you can okay. tell me you do something to the what you're working on and you go away from it. Okay, so what, um, it, yeah, I was just um, pointing that out because earlier I was showing off um, the solo thing here, which lets you solo um, the audio clip. And I pointed out that when you export this, even though you're only able to hear this clip and this stuff doesn't make any noise anymore, when you export it, it'll all still make noise and stuff. So this is a preview only. Okay. But what I was pointing out is that up here, this is not a preview. This is how the clip looks. Gotcha. So you need to make sure that all of your effects that you want activated are active when you export. That's what I was trying to point out. So, so you'd have to look up at the top to know what's going to happen, right? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to figure out how to get to that film nor well, where you had effects. I have, I can't seem to get that screen. I got everything else, crop, distort, transform. Oh, sure. Um, so those will only show up when you apply them to a clip. Um, so, if, so on this one where I don't have any effects on there, it doesn't show up. But on this clip where I do, it, 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 it doesn't. And if I deleted film noir from it, it'll get rid of the effects panel until I add a different one. So. Oh, that makes sense, thanks. Yep. And uh, once again, just like transition, there's all sorts of ways you can adjust things uh, to however you like. It's not totally relevant to what we're doing right now. So I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of gleaming over it, but. Yeah. Um, you know, play around with it. There's all sorts of fun stuff in there. And um, yeah. And the neat thing is you can just say it's gone. Yep. If you don't <laughs> like it, take it off. Exactly. And yeah, just like before, if I add like, oh no, oh geez, look how many horrible things I've added to it. Oh, I've totally <laughs> messed it up. Like, don't worry. The clip itself is fine. You can... Uh, you can just delete it and bring it back and nothing is broken. So just once again, reassuring you of all that. Um, okay. So uh, let it do, do, do. Got about an hour left. Does anyone need a bathroom break or something? No. No. Okay. Uh, so now that I'm supposed to go over ambient audio from the sound effects library. So that, that, that may not be on your um, computer, uh, Richard, but uh, for, for the rest of us, uh, you'll notice up here, uh, there's the three buttons. Um, on the left, what should be highlighted right now is the libraries. Then there's the photos and audio, and then there's titles and transitions. And we'll get to that some upper time. So if you go to uh, photos and audio right now, if you are, oh, come on. 
you have stuff loaded into this, which it doesn't look like I do. Wow. You'll see different music and different sound effects that have been loaded up. Oh, wait, no, I went to sound effects that loaded. So I don't know if you'll have them, Richard. I don't, it, that might just be something on our laptops, but uh, if you're on one of ours, um, you should be able to go down to sound effects here and just see a whole, a whole yeah, ton of things. A whole bunch of stuff. I've got them all. Bark, baseball, bat, closed door. I got them all. Great, great. That's what fun. Oh, it's ringing the doorbell. I'm used to answering that, so I'm like, oh, wait, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, just like with the video, you can sort of preview them. Let me turn on the audio here. Um, oh, yeah, someone I forgot to point out before. You can, you can actually play the clips back from here without even bothering with the audio skimming. If I were to click on them and just hit the space bar. There's this little graph here that shows you like where the brightness is. It plays it back like from the, the bar here. So that, that was something else to keep in mind. Um, just like when you're, you're about to import the footage. But anyway, if I go back to the sound effects, you can preview them by doing a very similar thing to that. You just click on it, you hit the space bar. And that's what ambient effect two sounds like. Sounds like a, a, a ghost is going to spook me. Um, let's let's add a bark to simulate Richard's house right now. There we go. Uh, now, now my dog's going to kind of find out what that is. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, he's still asleep. For some reason, for some reason, I can't get any audio on my uh, sound effect. Really? So you're not you're not seeing anything in there. Well, you I'm, had to I'm, turn your audio down at some point, didn't you? Uh, only on my other computer, but I should be able to hear it on my own Final Cut Pro on my Mac. I've, uh -oh. I've got closed door. I've, I've got the bark. I actually play on it, but I don't hear anything. In fact, it won't, won't even run. Huh? I can see the sound waves. I can transition across, but I get no bark at all. That's really weird. OK, it might be. Um, were you able to, are you able to hear the clips you have in your timeline and stuff? Or are you able to? I do, yeah, I can actually uh, skim and I can hear the sound effects. I mean, I can hear the audio and everything, but when I go here, I get nothing. Huh. Um, hmm. Not sure about that then. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you drag it down, if you drag the audio down and try to play it back, are you able to hear it? Like if I just put this random walrus in the middle of that forest there. Yeah, that uh, that's really weird. Let me um, let me put a clock tick. I highlighted that, brought it down. Boy, I I just don't hear anything. That's so odd. Huh. That, that's strange. I'm not sure then. Um, I won't even play. I I got them all, but I hit the play button and nothing. Nothing happens that, hmm, I'm not sure about that one then. Um, I think I'd have to see it myself to, to know what's happening. Um, but we won't, we won't spend too much time on this. It's just kind of demonstrating that they're there and how to use them. Um, but uh, if, it, if it is working for you, you should also be able to press this button to the side of it and that'll, Kind of play it as it should. Come on. Yeah, I've got the little button there, and I hit the play button, and it doesn't do anything. I'll have to when we're all done. I'll just have to come back and see what happened. Sure, sure. We yeah. Remind me after after we finish for the day. Um. So yep. Uh. So normally when you're making your own thing, like this is quite a lot of stuff to choose from. Um. Like you can just search for yourself to see if you can find something you want. Like, oh, I want to see if there's a, a drum effect. Oh, look, comedy drum. <laughs> Aha. Um, you can just kind of search to see if there's things you want in there. And just like with clips, you can drag them down 
and put them wherever you want in here. Like, oh, look how funny this waterfall is. Isn't that funny? It's a little quieter than the waterfall itself. Let me let me mute that real quick. And I said, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, that's something else to be aware of. Uh, but normally when you're making your own thing, you might wanna make your own sound effects because they're more specific to what you're looking for, but- uh, Yeah, you've got to find them too though. That can be a problem sometimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there is quite a lot in here. I've gone after sound effects before. It's not as easy as it sounds. You know what I had to do? I had to hit my space bar, then I could hear it. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you probably heard that. I did. Yeah, hear I that. heard it. We heard it definitely. I gotta be I gotta be careful with that. I'm gonna wake my talk up. Okay. So if you guys want to play around with that for like a minute, um, then we can move on to the next project. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't even know they were here. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm going to go to the bathroom for just a minute. So Fine. Play around with that. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute, too. But yeah, that's interesting. I had to hit my space bar for it to work. So if anybody has that problem, tell them to hit the space bar. I'll keep that in mind. I'll be right back. I'm back. Oh. Hello. Oh my God. River walk. River walk. Huh? It's banjo. Oh, I gotta hear. Can I hear river walking? I might need that. It's um. You gotta go to the sound effects. Draw oh, okay. pull down. I guess none of oh, nobody no. can play it except him. <laughs> oh no, I got it. It's it's in your if you've got your list of um, okay. Well, I have, I'm yeah, I'm not on an Apple right now, so. Oh okay, well I'll play it and play it back on mine. So. No, never mind. Oh yeah, it also has uh, music in in there too. So this yeah, is I the, can't use it. Of the jingles. It's it's not quite Deliverance, but you know, kind of. Kind of, kind of a little bluegrassy kind of, kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, all the sound effects that are used in here, they're, they're like, like, um, free license, free to use. So you can use them in whatever you want. You won't have to worry about copyright in that uh, specific area, just so you know. So, um, anything else you bring in? Well. You just have to check for yourself, but yeah. That's some pretty good stuff here, actually. Yeah, yeah, quite a lot, quite a lot. And it's more than just the, the sound effects. There's a lot of nice, easy music too.
Oh, uh, wow, crowd zone. Lobby to convention. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That could come in handy somewhere along the way. Kids cheering. Okay, does everyone, uh, does anyone want to show off a, a thing they made? I know there's not a lot you can do with the clips here. No. No? We're fine. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, the next, uh, we'll move on to the next project. There's a little more you can do with that. All right, um, I got mine. So uh, we're going to create a new library now. Now, uh, we could technically put everything into this one library, but we're trying to trying to get you into the habit of every time you're working on a new subject, you'll want a new library for it. Just because, um, if you if especially if you're working on different things for a while, they can get lost in like one big library. Yes, I've had that happen. Yeah, and um, especially when a library gets like way up there in storage, like like right. a couple terabytes, it can start to act funny. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's it's best to like single them out to some degree. Uh, so, done that. Yeah. So we're gonna create a new library. So just like before, go to file, then new, then library. So okay, tell me what a library is. Is that where you park everything? Is that I mean uh, a library you're... is um that's where that's what you use for any single projects and stuff. That's where you put, um, that's where all your clips go. Um, so that's it's like basically for the highest in the hierarchy for your, for your, show. For your stuff. Okay, for your show or your script or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Then there's um, events are like different things in, in the event. So uh, what was the example I used at the beginning? So say you went to film a, a rock concert, right? Right. Um, you would have uh, a library and you title it Rock Concert or whatever the name of the band is or something like that. Right. Then you would have events, which are, you could make it day one, day two, day three. Song yeah. one, song two, song three. Yep. And then within those events, you have projects. Projects are just like this. And that's specific videos that you're assembling together so you right. could have okay. uh All oh right. this is this is an interview i did with the band backstage at the end um, um on day one this is uh this is like some highlight of moments from day two you're getting very organized i don't know if i like the sound of that <laughs> yeah and it, right. it's, so. it's just it's just helpful for making sure you have everything slotted into the right place and it's easy to find uh you won't you won't be losing footage. You won't be going like, oh, man, where was that clip of, uh, right. of that dude doing that cool crowd surfing or something? Where can I find that? Oh, yeah, it was on day three. Let me look in this event. And right. there you go. Um, and I, I do go over this at the beginning. So you'll, you'll be able to see that recording of me saying the same kind of stuff. But All right, so new library, new library. And we're going to call this library. So you go up to file, new and library. We're gonna call this library um, Newt, N-E-W-T. And uh, um, uh, Robert, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're saving it in documents, not in movies, because uh, I can, uh, okay. All it right. can have issues with movies for some reason. Oh, well, right. I actually wanted to go to pictures for some reason. Pictures works fine too, but... Um, just, just, yeah, but that's also another term usually. I mean, it could be photographs, you know. Anyway, right. yeah. So, documents is probably a better place to go. Documents is, I know for sure it works. That's why I'm okay. recommending that. Got it. Yeah. Well, I want to save it to my external drive. So, that should... works fine. Yeah. For your computer, works the way you set it up. I'm just saying for the laptops we've given out, it can, it can work differently. So, okay. Yeah. Um, 
So newt. And once again, it's automatically created in events after today's date. So that's just what it thinks is helpful. Um, and you change that by hitting return. And then we're also going to call this newts. So what what did you also call newts? I'm sorry, I'm lost. I just since oh. it's it's a newt category. So yep. I just mean it's in a newt library. Is that all that means? Yep, newt library. And I also called the event newts. In fact, I'm gonna call it something else. I'm gonna call it newts. It'd probably be something else. Newt's events. There you go. So I can <laughs> <All right. laughs> newt event. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to import it by clicking the button. As I said, you can also do it by going to mm. file and uh, import media. Or just, simply... just real quick, I'm trying to change the name, but I don't. My, as I said, my mouse quit on me. I'm trying to do it on my trackpad. Sure. So you hit the return key, and that'll let you do it. Uh, okay. Let me highlight it. Perfect. There you go. So. So, yeah, we're going to import footage here. Click on that. What'd you have in mind this time? Well, so if you've already imported the footage from before, um, you're going to see a uh, sense of place is already front and center because that's the last place you were. Yeah. And import will always work like that because, uh, frankly, it's very helpful. Um, so if that's the case, then all you really need to do is just go back up to a one footage right there and then move on to continuity. And then you should see a clip called new continuity. All right, uh, second here. There's continuity. Yep. Okay. And it's, since it's the only clip, you can just click it and click import. That seems kind of simple, yeah. Yeah, I don't have those files because I don't that is, so I don't see it. Oh, I, I know, funny. yeah. I did. I made a zip of the uh, files, so I'll send that to you after the class. Um, okay, but I can so follow. Tomorrow, up. you'll have all the clips for the other things we do. Thank you. Um. So, and you're going to want to make a new project now. So file new projects and we're going to call this one continuity continuity i'll let you oh, oh, oh come so on pro does, so just to get this straight does project come under library i mean yep so the hierarchy okay, whatever your library, library name well, yeah library events project yeah i oh, gotcha all right yeah all right and projects is where you assemble the clip um yeah it gives clears you the, time. the timeline and ready to go again yep yeah and by golly it actually is a picture of a film of a newt yes it is i so. never would have guessed that but it turns out that that's exactly what it is might have, might be a salamander. I'm not totally sure myself. Um, okay, it's a lizard. How's that? Well, uh, I'm not sure a lizard actually works. It's an, it's clearly an amphibian. Okay. I wouldn't call a lizard an amphibian. Okay. They're yeah, more I don't reptiles. Know if I want to get that technical about it. Well, you know, they <laughs> absorb in moisture through their skin, and reptiles yeah, yeah. have it's scales. Just a tiny little critter. We'll see what happens after that. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Uh, just like before, just drag the, the whole clip down in there. Uh, let me bring it back to the normal screen there. Click once and then drag. So if you, I guess, if you had your projects, you'd give them some name or number, and then you could make sure you had the right project. And I guess that's what that would be. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Okay. you can rename any of these things at any time. Um, yeah. just by hitting the return key and but, 
but what I it would be important to me whether I came up with what I was working on or whether it came up with the blanks, a new screen to start all over. So, mm. yeah. Yes, however you want to organize for yourself, that's the main yeah. thing. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to point out with Final Cut, uh, unless some unless it gets interrupted somehow. When you open up Final Cut again, it'll automatically open up the libraries that you had open the last time. Oh, oh gotcha. Yeah. All right. That could um, be helpful, I guess. Yep. OK. I'm, I'm getting a, I, I did this quite a bit. I, I produced shows for 30 years mm -hmm. here. But I didn't quite get that connection. I just did it. <laughs> I'm not sure. So, um, just to explain what's going on here. So, this is a clip of, uh, of a young lady holding a newt, where she's holding it in her hand, she bends over, and she releases it into the water. Wow. So it can it can go back home to visit its its nuked friends. Now, um, basically, what we're gonna what we're gonna do here is we're going to organize. We're gonna use the cut tool and the trim tool, and all the tools we used before to organize this into um, into a sequence. Because as you can see right here, it's a little bizarre. She just kind of holds it for like twenty minutes. Right. and bends over and then waits for the camera to get to her and then lets it go. So I'm going to make um, it make sense. Yeah, so it's it's what 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 was going on here is they were basically simulating using multiple cameras where there's a wide where she's standing right here and then there's a close up. And instead of using two cameras or using two different takes um, he just took, he was, he just kept the camera running and then just moved over for each of them and planned on cutting it up and editing, which is what we're going to do. So, uh, let's see. Sorry, what did I do? What was I looking for? So, according to the notes, this should be achievable in four cuts where you seamlessly go from her holding the newt and let me just do a rough kind of edit here to kind of show you what it looks like so i got a first clip here of her holding it then i have the wide where she bends over whoop that's the newt <laughs> <laughs> bends over and you know throws that newt back to where it came from get out of here and then are releasing it yeah they didn't get it and the, the photographer didn't get the release much <laughs> that's the problem right there that's what we're trying to fix yeah so yeah so you'll see there just like I wasn't even listening to the audio. I wasn't putting things there exactly, but I'm just kind of demonstrating what the idea is. Now, right. when you watch it back, instead of it being kind of manufactured the way it was, and ignore the audio because he's going to be giving uh, directions, yeah. it looks more like this. Please hold, please. And if you're just looking at the audio there, that seems more like a smooth sequence. Do you kind of get what I'm getting at? Instead of her kind of holding there for uncomfortable amounts of time as the director tells her what to do, instead right. we've edited it into, into an actual sequence where she right. bends over and she puts it into the water. Right. Do, do you guys get what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's what your assignment is. This is your little quiz. So um, make it happen. And if you have any questions along the way, be, feel free to ask. I know because uh, right now, this is the editing part. So.
And um, yeah, Richard, you can just work with whatever clip you have. If there's some sort of equivalency you can see, I'd still like to, um, you know, see if you can apply what I just taught here to that, if, if, okay. if at all. All right. And if everyone's okay with it after I, I'm done, um, after everyone's done making the adjustments they want, we can do a little presentation. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ellery, I'm afraid you don't have a choice, but everyone else, if you're comfortable. <laughs> And this is just kind of something you have to, you know, you have to, to get. This is like, this is like the reason uh, I called this continuity is that this is just one of the things that comes along with editing is continuity, is clips streaming from one to another without, yeah. without being jarring and stuff. Um, and that's just sort of something you have to get a feel for. And yep. that's, that's the easiest way I know of to learn that. Continuity is a really fun one, though. My my late wife was incredibly good at watching and seeing continuity errors. Mm -hmm. It's always a lot of fun watching a watching something on on uh, tape with her, so I could go back and check and see if she actually did see it. Oh yeah, right. She was damn good. Well, because on uh, on big sets and all that, they they pay people a lot of money. They pay people tons of money to be. So their whole job is just continuity, just making sure things line up correctly from uh, shot to shot. Because they don't, all, they almost never in any kind of production shoot things in order and in the order they go. So they have to set things up in, um, like in whatever way that the shooting schedule uh, works for that because they may have a certain location one day and not have it the next. I, I remember when, when I was when I was teaching editing, I had a clip from uh, I can't remember what the movie was, but you had a shot of a plane coming in, mm -hmm. you know, coming in for a landing, and it's very clearly a 747. Yep. They cut to the other angle as it's touching down. Different kind of airplane. Most yep. people didn't notice. They were oh, using no. stock footage. I had a guy in the class that worked for Boeing. He said, different airplane. He caught yeah. it immediately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing. That's because they had two good clips. They had a clip of a plane landing. They had a plane, clip of a plane touching down, and they yep. looked similar enough um, uh, to work. I, uh, <laughs> I, I remember another one that, that I wish I had the footage of. Uh, Fred Savage did a movie, a, a series called Working. And in one episode, he's in a bar with somebody and the level of the beer keeps changing yep. <laughs> from angle to angle. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. They had to have yep. left it that way on purpose. Oh yeah, because they probably took multiple takes and he, it, it got drank and like throughout those takes and they didn't quite refill it to the right level so well there's a bounty paper towel commercial on tv where there's a female sitting at the edge of a table a male at the other one and i guess his daughter comes in with a sword oh yeah Pokes kind of pokes if mm -hmm. you look at the first part she has a cell phone in her left hand and when they transition that phone's no longer there that's <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're right they did multiple takes and they did the best one but you got to catch it because it's really fast exactly like at some they point to... they decide she had a cell phone in there they did some sort of break or they they like 20 takes later it got put down and they didn't catch it so yep, yeah they yeah. used to used to go through a lot of uh polaroid film trying to keep track of that kind of stuff mm. And yeah, even though they have people on set who are paid to do that, like they don't catch everything. So that, nope. that's what happens. Because that it's a lot of things to keep track of. It really is. Yep. 
It's a lot of fun, though. It is. It's good, good stuff. So um, how's everyone's progress coming along? Um, Doing fine. OK. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering about editing it. Yep. I, I mean, I'm thinking of, so I'm thinking of it in terms of the whole COVID thing. And I'm kind of wondering why certain things haven't opened up, you know? It's, I know it's not my decision, but it's interesting. It seems to me like in an editing room, there would be much less intercontact. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. yeah but then yeah. you have okay. what happens for the next person that comes in. Mm. Yeah. How long do you leave in between? Yeah, or how much do you disinfect? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That there's a that has to go down. Um, that's for sure. But most most people in COVID now are are more worried about what goes through the air. So anyway, that's true. Yeah. Well, our next stage of opening, and I don't know what date that is, but our next stage when we do reopen further will be edit rooms reopening. So yeah. Um, so that I don't, I don't have a date for it. I don't have procedure or anything. We're still deciding that. But. Yeah. yeah, it's probably not your place to say right now. <laughs> so. Right now. Yeah. Nor mine. Although we'd all love to have it happen. Yeah. I want to get back in the studio. We've got a, a jazz musician who wants, we tried to work in a, a tavern that didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. Sound system at the bars sucked. Oh yeah. Well, I can't wait to have people coming in here again someday. Like I'm, I'm bored as hell as the in the equipment room. Yeah, so, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody's coming to me for questions anymore. I just kind of wait there for people to show up to take their equipment out, bring it back. It's like oh, that's right. boring. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm, I want to. I want to see the TriCaster explode. You know, <laughs> we'd love to help you out. We really would. Well, yeah, the you don't want to buy one though. Take the micro mobile out of there. Uh, do you you have a micro mobile system ready to go yet? Or yeah, we we have a micro mobile and it is check outable to people who are qualified. So I would love to take that. I have okay. to talk to the people I've been working with. We can talk about that later. I don't know if you took mm. uh, a class on it at any point, but we'll, we'll oh yeah, I have. That. Yeah, I would love to get that thing back out. Absolutely. <sighs> okay. Dream the impossible. No, stop that. So yep, yeah, we we got about twenty five minutes left. Uh, is everyone? comfortable with this does anyone want to show off what they made no i don't want to show mine off but <laughs> okay we got the idea i mean it's not that hard to right oh sure sure but fortunately it, it, it's one of those cornerstones of not so much like oh how does all these buttons work it's more just uh editing theory like how you put a sequence right. together so that's yeah. right um well i think it is about how these buttons work for me that's what it was oh sure <laughs> well well i'm just saying like this particular part we're moving beyond oh, that. this particular part okay yeah yeah because this isn't just about like cutting in random spots and figuring out how the tools work it's more about like how do you well, use think... them to sculpt to sculpt so, uh, the the um uh the statue of david out of marble or, you know, <laughs> right, yeah. or a lady putting a newton to a water out of uh, a clip yep <laughs> it's all the same thing really in concept well i look at that little scene and i i say okay i guess it makes the point but there's a lot of issues with it just the, how it's set up and anyway yeah. oh yeah it's yeah not you'd want to go shoot it yourself and make it yeah. work better <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know what, where I'd sell this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm, obviously, I'm, if this wouldn't be a, a, a movie in and of itself, you wouldn't, uh, <laughs> right. you wouldn't put this up on YouTube like, whoa, look at this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. There are people who would. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. if, if you're concerned about like entertainment, yeah. entertainment or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but th well, this is more like a small sequence and a different thing. Like, yeah, this is right. Like, I understand. The, park. <laughs> so, the entertainment factor on YouTube seems to be kind of lost sometimes. Well, I think I if you did a, I think if you did a movie on clowns and you used some of those effects you have, <laughs> you could really do a good job. That's all I got out of. I mean, that's what well, I got out. We we do have people here who are into like clowning, and they've made videos on clowns. So it's, oh yeah, they, they don't thing. fit. A lot of them would fit. It's very fun. Yeah. Um, it's tough to be a clown. It really is. <laughs> have you been a clown? No, but I've watched people who don't do it very well. Oh okay. Okay. So now that we're all pretty much good on that section there, yep. uh, I'm gonna show up a thing called uh, how to edit in ambient audio. Um, so it looks like the main audio parts are tomorrow, but I'm just gonna show off how ambience works because this is very important for clips like this because i'll play this back for you and i want Can you to tell me what time. ambience what does ambient mean it means uh not, not amb dialogue ambience is stuff in the background that oh gotcha. um, all right yeah because i know i know humans kind of tune these things out um right things here all the time but like you'll right. hear like cars in the background you'll hear people walking around right exactly general. yeah um, Got it. And if you don't put it in, it can be really jarring. It can be because it'll sound like they're in a vacuum, like they're in outer space. Um, wow. So let me play this back. And I this time do pay attention to the audio. Please. Hold, please. Perfect. OK. So obviously you wouldn't want, like say that you like the, how the video turned out and you're like, all right, that's good. You don't like that audio, obviously, because you can clearly hear the director saying stuff in there. Mm, um, right. So you're gonna wanna change that. So let us remove the audio from this. I'm going to do that by once again going up to view, show audio lanes. Let me see. No, it won't let me do it that way. Oh, I just did, uh, it just detached the audio from all of the clips and just deleted the audio. Yep, detach audio, that does it. So if you right click on them, there's so a- So where'd you go to do, where'd you go? I'm lost now. Oh, sorry. You were. You select all of them, select the whole thing. If you right click on it, there's a selection called detach audio right here. Gotcha, all right. And that, what that does is now the audio is separate. You'll notice it's not hi highlighting the whole thing when I click that now. And it allows me to, to highlight the audio itself and hit the delete button and boop. Bye-bye. No more audio, it's totally silent. Right, we want the splash. That's the only thing we want when she drops it in. But, but well, it's, probably a, not. it's a pretty small creature. You might not necessarily <laughs> hear that, but. If you're fine tuning it, yeah, you might want yeah. a little thing like that. But All I'm just right. going to demonstrate um, how ambient audio works. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, so the question is, what do we put in there? Yeah, so I'm getting to that. So what you want to do is you'll notice up here they were they were recording audio, and there are long sections where nobody's talking. So if I play that back, right, you got a little bit of water, maybe. You can hear water. You can hear critter like you know, burn right. things in the background. So if I were to use that highlighting technique from before, if I were to 
Let's see. Come on. Well, let's deselect that again. Let's see where it's mark clear selected ranges. If I were just to grab that part, whoop, right there. That's a little section, and that's what we call like room tone. Um, yeah, you can see that by the height of the audio. Yep, that's an easy <laughs> way to visualize it. Yeah, I, I was going to point that out. So good catch. Yeah. Good catch. Room tone is actually something people specifically do in areas that are not like totally silent, like a studio lot, um, where they just record our audio for 30 seconds to a minute. Um, and that just gathers the proper ambience for that room. Wow. Um, I like what, that. And what that allows you to do is if I hit is it shift three. Nope. Nope. Like it. Oh, no. So if I were just to bring in this, ignore that part I just did there, and detach audio again, but this time, detach. Oh, okay. I guess I did do it. Okay, so now it's just an audio clip. Okay. So now I can put this under here. Right. And they don't sound like they're in space anymore. That's just background noise going. There's actually a little even, bit here that I missed, so I can trim that out. I didn't even hear it. But that's OK. My ears are bad. So. Oh, there sure. you go. <laughs> and the great thing about ambient audio like this is that it's so benign that you can copy it, copy it with uh, Command C and then paste with Command V like that. Um, so Command C to copy, Command V to paste when you have something selected. And then you can just kind of play it back. Okay, what's the second command to paste? Command P? Uh, command V. V for uh, vocal. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And then you may want to turn the audio up a bit, but you can hear that now, you know, minus any sound effects um, that you might want to add, it just sounds like backgrounds there. And that is what you do um, to get rid of to get rid of the audio you don't want from uh, a clippy source, get rid of all the director stuff, but also still make it sound like the location you're filming. And that's a, that's a pretty important thing to, to, to do. And it's not just for outdoors, it's for indoors at a concert or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something to really think about when you're out shooting is to get that sound. That is it's right. so important, it really is. That's good to know. Yeah. Take the time. You know, it's kind of interesting I, I keep reading script books and it talks about there's this thing you can't do when you write a script. Mm -hmm. You can't get into too much detail that treads upon the director. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I thought, wow, okay, you know, everybody's got their place and you just, you know. So, well, you know, if you, you are the director, down. that's different. But yeah, generally, yeah. Uh, it's not really relating to editing, but um, yeah, yeah. If you're if you're the script writer, um, the director's the one that's in charge, really. Um, yeah. So, you know, if it yeah. if so, you you're not normally given like shot advice most of the time. Right. Yeah. And it kind of works the same way with editing too. You wouldn't go into like massive detail of like cut to this, last for three seconds, cut to this, cut to that. You, you right. don't normally do that either. Yeah. So it was a revelation to me. Oh yeah. Of course I'd always done everything. So you know. Oh sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. And you learn that when you work in, in groups and productions yeah. and stuff. Right. Like that. 
everyone has their job to do and you can you right. need to let them do it uh, even yeah. which for us because i'm i'm the same way for us like self-starters that's something to get right. to it really is yeah well i think it's a great idea i the only thing personally i found wrong is i can't hear you ambient noise so i think <laughs> i need to go back to the go well, back raise to the volume of it a bit maybe i can I can help. I, am I the only one that doesn't hear it? I'm just curious. I get yeah, it. that I hear. There you go. Now I hear it. I I didn't hear it before either. Oh, okay. It's not just my ears. So, <laughs> right. I just say, okay. So when I go out, I need to know my ears aren't right. Yeah, it might it might just be uh, the screen share it might not be sending the audio at the right, right. level, but um, well, it's important for your video if you're doing this. It is, yeah, you yeah. don't you don't want them to sound like they're in outer space. You want it to sound like it's an actual room. And it did something, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I worked with a, a kid that had had been actually worked in a on a feature length film, hmm. but they did it over the course of like six years. You got yeah. to watch him grow up during the, the movie. It's kind of uh, weird. Um, but huh. they didn't do the sound very well. They, oh, okay. uh, the, the movie opens with a really nice shot of a harbor. Uh -huh. And this kid is narrating. Yeah. And, you know, you got the sounds of the birds and the wind and, you know, that kind of stuff. And they cut to the to the boat that they they were looking at and he comes and flops down on a, on the canvas and starts talking and it's the same narration voice without any ambient sound at all oh wow and it, it is jarring. so jarring yeah yeah i have to watch for that and it goes back and forth through the movie there's places where they had to, they overdubbed the audio the the voice yeah uh -huh. didn't add any ambient sound right yeah, that, that's a common thing in amateur productions because sometimes it's called ADR. Yep. Um, sometimes you're, you do ADR, which is where you dub in a voice. And it's because the recording you made of their voice when they were talking on the scene just wasn't useful. It's too- Right, exactly. You can't hear it very well. So you have them come in later and just dub themselves over. But when you do that, you gotta be careful that it's, that you have all the other sounds associated with the room yep, right. still there because otherwise it'll sound very off-putting. It is so weird to listen to that movie. I wish yeah. I still had uh -huh. a copy of it. And you know, it um, don't worry too much. Like if you can't catch the vocals that well, it's like you'd be surprised just how infrequently they actually use the onset vocals for most movies. It's actually, <laughs> I would. So yeah, I've noticed that too because I. I began watching the movies like on Netflix with with what's said below. Yep. And I can look at it and I can say, well, here's where they cut that out. Here's where they totally ignored that with an action. You know, here's you know, there's all this oh, stuff. Yeah. I say because they yeah. imported the script as the subtitles, but but if they yeah. do the looping right, it's hard to tell that they've done it. It is if they do it correctly. Yeah. But if they do it oh. wrong, oh my god. Well, the only way I could tell would be, I, know, I think they have for the most part, although I think there's a lot of things that they do in the name of saving money on, on Netflix stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I think they did that well, but it's just an advantage to say, okay, here's what actually somebody wrote and this is what happened. And we know it's going to be different, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, so just to get back to the um, audio thing, like once again, you don't have to just yeah. leave it at ambience. You can add whatever you want. You can add a narration. Right. Um, yeah. And you can also add a sound effect when the salamander hits the water. <laughs> Which in Yeah, this that case, seems a little un unnecessary. <laughs> it's a little loud. <laughs> well, well I don't know. I was just thinking it. like uh, maybe you shot off like a, <laughs> like a bullet there. I was going to see if I could find some jungle sounds or something like that. Yeah, right. I think it's, you could also change the ambience too. You could make it sound like if it doesn't sound like the way you want it to, you can change that. It just just you do it just has to match basically. 
So you you can change it within this system by going to probably some sound effects, right? Yeah, there's plenty yep. of like default ambience in here, or right. you could record something yourself um, somewhere. Right. Like you're like, oh, this this place sounds the way I want this clip to sound. Let me record exactly. that for like a couple minutes. Um, yeah. That that's the way to do it. Right. So um, that's all the topics for today. We've got about ten minutes left. Um, we can be done. Yeah, if, if there's any questions relating to all the stuff we've talked about, I'm happy to answer no. them. Okay. Well, I appreciate the education, not only from you, but from the other participants. I learned something today. Oh, that's great. Good to hear. <laughs> I'm glad. I really am. Yeah.